This is Plex. I've used it before and it's pretty good. Uh, but to get all the benefits, you need to upgrade to 399, and I am tired of having lots and lots of little things killing me every month. I got my Netflix, I got my Disney, I got my Amazon Plus, I got my Office. It's all murdering my finances. So you know what? Rather than going with Plesk, I'm going to go with a free open source alternative called Jellyfin. <laughs> The native apps are not as good, but it does give you a good server and it does give you some apps you can use and it's under some pretty heavy development. So I'm going to go for this one because it's free. Have you noticed nowhere on the page is any opportunity to part more with my monthly wage? Awesome. So we're going to begin by installing the server and I'm just going to shove this on a Windows machine, which is the easiest option. So we go to Windows and we go to the official downloads for the server. Now you'll notice you've got clients and you've got server there. Under clients, we have lots of different media players. We have one for that Linux thing people talk about. Uh, we have one for Kodi, we have one for Android, iOS, Android TV, Roku, and WebOS, which covers a lot of it. Now, a lot of these are, of course, web styled interfaces because they're essentially a browser wrapped up to access the web interface. But that's not a big problem for me, and I don't have any real complaints with it. So, let's go back to Windows and see how easy it is to install the server there. I'm going to click on Downloads, and in true open source style, we have this big, terrifying, confusing screen that will make many people cry. But you just click on the top one. It's really that simple. Wait for that to download, and then I click on it, and wait for it to launch. Now, because this is an open source product, it's entirely possible that my antivirus software is currently trying to murder it. At very minimum, you do get this Windows protected your PC error. When I try to launch this from Chrome, it doesn't always launch, so I did have to go into Downloads and double-click on my downloaded file there. So I'm just going to click on More Info and Run Anyway, which probably means that my computer is now full of open source viruses. And from this point onwards, I basically next agree to sell my soul and then copy lots and lots of files into my system. Now, of course, this is a well-supported open source community project, so I don't actually have any fear of installing it onto my system. So rather than making you sit through all this installation process, I'm going to pause through the magic of editing. And just like that, Jellyfin is installed and ready to go. So I click on Close. To access Jellyfin, all I've got to do is open up my browser, type in localhost colon 8096, and then you'll arrive at a setup screen. You can also run the Tray app and double click on this as well. We're now going to click on Next. I'm going to give it a name of CK Enthusiast. And give it a password. Then I'm going to click on next. And I'm going to add, and I'm going to add my media library. I'm going to select shows and I'm going to add my folders. Navigate through my drive structure into my YouTube media folder and click on OK. Then I click on OK again, and we should now have some shows available. I'm then going to click on Next, set my country, and click on Next again. Notice that no one's asked me for any money so far. It's amazing. I'm then going to click on Next finally, and click on Finish. And it's that easy to use it. Now I'm going to log in through the web interface, which is basically accessible from any device, as long as you know that device's IP address. And I'm going to log in. Now I've got a simple interface with my shows. And we're going to look at one of my other wonderful videos. And that's enough of that one. 
Now we have a server and it's running, let's take a look at the media player that comes with Windows desktops. We're just going to go to GitHub. We do have a few different options here. Uh, we have Debian, we have Mac OS, and we have Windows. Now we all know the one I'm going to go for, which is Windows, demonstrating that you can set up a server and access it from any other PC. So we'll run this program, and this one didn't have any problems with my antivirus, so I'm going to click on install, and yes. And I'm going to let it copy over all those lovely files and settings and all the other things I really don't care about. I just want the software to run. Video of magic video editing time. Now we've stopped that brief interlude, we're going to click on launch and this will launch the player. So now we have a media player. We're going to add a server. I'm going to type in localhost and 8096, then click on connect. I'm going to type in my username and my password. And as you can see, it basically shares the same interface that we had while going for the web, only we don't have all that annoying address bar at the top. We have a little drop down menu here which shows dashboard, select server, settings, exit application, etc. We also have favorites for all your recently viewed content. We have over here a sync play, which will allow you to create a group and synchronize play between multiple devices. We also have a cast device which will allow me to cast to Chrome and other devices. We have a search and we have a little CK enthusiast man with profile, quick connect, display home, playback, subtitles, client settings, controls, dashboard, metadata, select server, sign out and exit application. And of course, the main thing we need to do now is play a movie of some kind. So I'm just going to click on my gyroscope distraction. Now, amazingly, that was a special effect that was in my folder. So what we actually need is an actual video. So we're going to click on that one and it starts playing. We have the usual scrub bar. It's a little bit basic. It doesn't have all the features that Plesk has by any means, but it is perfectly functional. And for the defined purpose of sending a movie over to a player and then playing it, it seems to do its job jolly well. I've gone to the Play Store on my Android phone and I'm clicking install. I'm now installing the Jelly Finn app which should allow me to see all my wonderful media directly on my phone. Once it's finished installing, I simply open it up and I click on allow to send me notifications, choose a server, primary and connect. Now I just got to log in with my details. And go. And that's it. So it's the same basic interface, but it does ask for some battery optimization. So if I try to find jellyfish here somewhere. OK, it's not in this list, so I'm going to ignore it and I'm going to go to my shows and I'm going to try and play something from my laptop. I have all my M2 screws organized and ready to retrieve at a moment's notice. And with that, we basically have a media player set up on my Android phone as well. Of course, it will also go on Android TV and it will go on my tablet. And that is all I can really say about Jellyfin. It's basic. It certainly doesn't have all the features of Plesk, but then it doesn't really have all the features that I miss either. I'm a fairly simple guy who just wants to take his MP4 files, shove them on a server and play them on devices. I don't need a lot more features than that. In fact, um, as a web developer, I have in the past simply made myself a HTML page on my server and played videos that way. And this isn't far off that in many ways. 
but the ability to simply dump my mp4 files into a folder and have them update and then play on various devices around the place is exactly what I'm looking for. It's free, it's not nagging me to spend even more of my money and for that I am eternally grateful. Thanks for watching, please like, follow and subscribe and let me know in the comments if there's any other tutorials or things you want to know or see happen on this channel. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you guys again soon.